Okay, and welcome back. Uh, this is Tammy. I'm your painter, artist, person today. I hope you all are having a really great and awesome day. Um, doing better with my allergies. Now, the uh, only thing I'm having issues with, which is crazy, it's not one thing, it's something else, right? Um, I'm having a neck pain a little bit. I think I slept wrong. I was just... It's just been a crazy, crazy day. Oh, and here's something funny to start this whole painting off. I locked myself out of my locker at the gym. So 20 minutes I'm standing around in a towel hoping that somebody would help me uh, get into my locker, which I finally found somebody to go get someone because I don't think it would have been really good for me walking around in a towel. So anyways, welcome. Um, after that, probably way too much information. <laughs> Tonight, uh, my goal is to wrap up our toucan, call him done. I've been debating on the background. I might just want him to be my focal point. I haven't really decided. So, um, I might get opinions or ask everyone, hey, should I paint a background in it or should I keep him as my main subject? Um, so, if you want to in your... Um, in the comments down below, let me know if you want me to paint in a background or if it looks just fine with my just my toucan. Um, again, part of me wants to keep it just him as a focal point, but um, I can call him done tonight and then go back later and put a background in if I choose to. Uh, so again, let me know. Um, also, remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for any new upcoming paintings that I'm going to be doing on Wednesdays, brand new. Also, my wrap-up Thursdays are my paintings that I just put off, got lazy, life get, got in the way, whatever excuse I want to put out there. So, I have wrap-up Thursday um, paintings. Also, I'll be starting up live on Facebook um, if you want to join in on some free painting um, for kids as well as adults every other Thursday um, so that also be available and I'm trying to work in drawings um, if you want to do wildlife drawings I'm going to be doing A to Z and um, go from there so I'm trying to work that in on my Saturdays um, I don't have a life, y'all, if you can tell. So let's get to our paintings after all that. Um, I'm sure by then you've already fast forwarded this so you don't have to listen to the gibberish. So like I said, my goal tonight is to actually get this done so that we can easily move on to another one, which I will give you a preview of what that one will be. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna come in and start working up um, some details. I did not like that brush and just start continue building to get my colors a little bit brighter um, when it's dry like this you're able to go in and build up your colors a little bit more because you're not blending what's also nice is if um, it's a section you put down you don't like because it's already cured to the painting or the canvas um, when you can go in and wipe up the fresh new paint that you put down so right now I'm in a roundabout way I'm lightly glazing over top of this to build up more yellow to make it a little bit brighter so it's not um, it's a little bit more water than paint just to like I said to brighten it up and to give it a little bit more depth depth and um, realism So I hope you guys have enjoyed your week so far. It is Tuesday, new paintings. And if there's a painting that you would like to see me paint, please also comment in, in the below. I will make sure I check on a regular basis to answer everybody's questions, comments, or suggestions. I know there are tons of painters out there and artists who do things way different than I do. And each one has a little bit of a different technique to it. So maybe you'll find one that you like the way they do it. 
Um, so just keep looking and, and searching for someone that you want to paint with, that you enjoy painting with. And the reason I'm just coming in and doing the yellow first before I go back into the black is I picked a section that will kind of loosen me up a little bit. Um, I've been sitting behind the computer all day. So I need to uh, get my frame of thought uh, in the right place so by painting the yellow will help me loosen up to paint, go into the more detailed area. So again like anything it's always good to be in the right frame of mind. If you're doing it consistently the same time every week you're pretty much starting to get in the right frame of mind for it. But if you're having a day and it's just awful, throw your throw up another painting that you, you're okay if it gets messed up and not one that you've been working on for hours. Or pick up the one you've been working on for hours and work out whatever mood you're in or whatever's going on. I always find by the time I get done painting, I'm really relaxed. So again, I'm looking at the shapes, even though I'm just going back in and touching up areas, I still need to look at my shape that is going on in that area, not just throwing paint down. You really want to make sure that you're paying attention to what it is you're painting. I am excited about the new painting after this one. Actually, there's quite a few I'm really excited about that's coming up um, because they're new and I get to start fresh on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm finding I'm enjoying it. Wrapping up paintings that I've started, but I'm also seeing how and why I was so frustrated with them. I didn't give myself easy paintings to work on, that's for sure in the sense like I'm doing sunflowers and they have a lot a lot of petals but I know once I'm done with it I'll be extremely happy so some of the white I'm putting down it's um, pretty bright but once it dries some I'm gonna come back in with a wash to um, with a yellow to make those a little bit more of a hot spot of yellow to make them a little bit brighter. So the white kind of knocks out the area for my brightness. And again, like I'm always saying, which is also a reminder for me, just keep building, look at your shapes, keep adding, adding, adding. I'm sure, which would be a challenge. How many layers of paint can you put down on one painting, which is probably quite a bit, to keep improving what you've done? That would be something interesting to to try to start one at the new year in the new year and then every day or every other day or once a week go in and keep adding color to it and keep building and building it would be interesting by the end of the year one to mark down how many layers you put down but to see the end result that sometimes it does take 100 hours or 50 layers of paint before you can get it exactly the way you want it. It sounds like a great idea, but I'm sure after a point I would be either getting really bored with it or 
just don't want to mess with it anymore. Knowing me, that's why, like I said, I've got so many unfinished paintings for Thursday. Again, all I'm doing is building color and looking at my shapes. And again, I know that you're going to get bored me with me saying that. Everything has a shape. Even shadows have a shape. Well, it goes a long way, so it has a little bit of a shadow in here. So I just want to get the basic color down and then kind of wash it in. looking at the way it's going into the feathers. When I first started college and they taught you to look at your subject, really look at it. Just don't assume you know where everything goes because we're not whatever subject we're painting or drawing or creating that's not us and when you do all of a sudden I found um, when I'd be riding the subway to go to school I started looking at things differently I didn't look at them in as a whole I started seeing all the shapes in the cityscapes, all the shapes in the clouds, um, someone standing next to me, the way their shirt fell and the shapes that it was creating. That lets you know sometimes too when you start seeing it that way and not as a shirt or clouds or whatever and you, you, you start seeing how to draw it or how to paint it. You're starting to get the artist eye Because what you're doing is you're breaking it down on, okay, how would I draw that? How would I paint that? And then it doesn't seem overwhelming. I, And that's what I had to teach myself is not look at the whole picture. That's why sometimes people will draw in grids. Because all they're doing is they're focusing on that one area. I've tried that myself. I have tried to paint in grids. And I'm not saying I can't do it, but I, it, it, my brain just had a hard time wrapping around it. I just was not getting it. Or I just, I don't know. I teach grids if, um, for those who are really struggling to get them to really look at the shapes and um, zero in on those areas. So I have taught that way doesn't mean I like that way but you can kind of do that in anything in painting grid it off if you have to or you know definitely in, in drawing a lot work in grids So I'm putting white over on top of my black here so my yellow will pop more. So it'll just be a wash going over this area. So again, when I'm working with my blue, I'm sorry, with my black, I'm always adding a little bit of blue into it so I have a richer black. And some might put um, purple in, but this one, um, his feathers have a lot of blue in them. 
and it could be uh, the reflection from the sky reflecting off of it. So not everything is pure black. When you um, print at a printing place, it's never a true, it's never straight black. They add um, a percentage of cyan, magenta, and yellow into their black, which gives you even a richer black. I did experiments when I worked for a printing company. Um, I had them do a test strip for me, and each one would have 20% of, of the cyan, magenta, and the yellow. 30%, 40%, all the way up to 100%, and black was always at 100%, just to see what which one gave me the richest color in black, especially if you're putting it on um, shiny material, like for a magazine or, or um, a flyer of some sort that is a big promotional piece. When you work with your printer, if you're going to have something printed, I found um, when I work for a printing company, if you want to get better results, talk to the printer and the print the guy himself or the lady who's back there printing. They see everything. They're the ones that add the color to the press. They can let you know if you you know by doing this or this you you'll get a better piece. So again, I'm just adding blue into the mixture of the black to give it some depth. So again, I'm not in a rush to get this done, though I would like to have it done tonight. I sh should have it done tonight. Um, if you're looking to quickly get things painted at a faster pace, within two or three hours, it's done, um, then my format is not for you because, I'm not saying it isn't, but I think this is what, number four? And I'm just now wrapping it up but I'm only working on this for an hour now tonight I'm going to if I said this just the last time on the last one I'm gonna go over if I have to but um, some other things came up that I I had to stop after my hour but my goal is to get this bad boy done within my hour or go over a little bit. Like I said, I've seen artists will there go in and they'll get things painted quickly and they look good. I mean, they look awesome and they, they're painting on a much larger scale. I'm in no rush. I don't I don't have anywhere I need to go. I want to make sure that when I'm done with my piece, I'm very happy with it. Not saying they're not happy with it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not putting them down. Everybody paints and wants to achieve different things with their paintings. I'm adding a little bit of white to create some of highlights in the feathers, which it's really not showing white, it's actually showing a blue highlight. And again, I'm thinking this is coming from the sky. 
sky that's hitting his feathers. And remember, if your brush starts to feel dry, get some water on it. And sometimes too, if you put get too much paint on your brush, um, that will give you that drag effect of paint, which doesn't feel smooth going across. So that's why I always try and keep, uh, just on my tip, I really try not to load the whole brush up. Even if I'm mixing, I'll try and use a different brush for the mixing process so I'm not working with all that paint. When you're doing feathers, make sure you're following what you're seeing um, on your reference photo. To give it um, that realistic realism to it. Otherwise, if, it, if the feathers are going all different ways, you're getting more abstract. So I put a little bit more white on it um, so that I can blend my black in it to work in the highlights. And again, if you're using this reference photo, from Cindy Fry out on Facebook, uh, Photos for Artists. You will probably see things a little bit different than I do. Again, like I said, just have have fun with your piece. Enjoy what you're doing and what you're painting. Like I said, I usually will have music going on in the background while I'm painting. But I, I, I mentioned last time they didn't block it, but they did um, put a, um, not a warning, but they did let me know that, um, this would, could not be shown in all countries because of the music. So I did find, um, for the editing, I have a very basic background music for y'all to listen to while I'm painting, but now with me not listening to any of it, all I hear is the fan in the background, or the air circulation, <laughs> and no music. So again, I'm just building, building, building. put some white to do my wash over top of it. Some of my feathers need to come out a little bit more in the black. I have to be careful because this part's still wet so my some of my white is coming out gray, but as long as there's enough there for when I put the wash over it with the yellow, um, that it pops. I was pulling in too much gray, so I went and wiped the brush off just to get um, 
more white and not keep blending. Now also remember when you're painting and you keep telling yourself that doesn't look right or I did this wrong or I did that wrong. Remember, you're not going to have your reference photo up next to your painting when you display it or show it off. No one's going to know that you didn't do this part or you missed that part or or you know whatever if you find that you don't like it for whatever reason and it just bothering you too much wait till it dries and go back and correct it remember over here i made a huge mistake and i had to go back and correct it I left, I made his orange part of his um, beak here go too close in that I had to pull it back out. In fact, looking at this area, I may go in and touch it up before I, um, when I get to the point of calling this done. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. In fact, since we're mentioning it, let me go in and touch up some of the colors that I'm seeing. You don't need to load your brush up as if you're painting a house. Again, also depends upon what you're painting. Some areas you might need a bigger brush. But when you're going in working on details, work on a brush that's very comfortable for you. Like I said, right now, this brush that in my hand is what's been feeling comfortable for me lately. I've been thankful for uh, my one friend here who's allowing me to share part of his building I have um, my office here and um, a small section out front where he sells tires I'm able to have a paint class there also where I couldn't do it anywhere else especially with um, this pandemic that's been going on so slowly I've been bringing in classes which has been very exciting Now I'm just going in and reviewing some areas to give it a little bit more depth to it, but yet also I feel a little bit of correction here and there. See, a painting is never done. You always find something to paint that's like, I think I need a little bit more of this. And again, too, when you're painting, go with the way you feel. Go, it's, it's, I feel sometimes it's, it's the mood, it's the way you're feeling. It's, let the painting become part of you. And also, too, remember, um, when people look at your paintings, they're not supposed to be right on top of them like, I am um, or you are the way watching me paint they look at it from a distance you get up close that's where you see all the brush strokes and and everything but from a distance it has a completely different feel a different look in all honesty I think I'm avoiding that section right now <laughs> I'm trying to figure out in my head how I want to 
to do that. But again, I'm, I'm allowing it to overwhelm me, so I just have to break it down. And maybe I'm being too honest with y'all on some of this stuff, but hey, let's, let's be honest and everything. There's sometimes, there's some people that can make this look so easy. And there's times where um, it can be a little overwhelming or difficult or, you know, just keep working with it all right so I put this part off long enough <laughs> let's, let's attack it because this part is is pretty much almost completely done to my liking so I just need to go in and start wrapping this up now this is where before which I'm just seeing it now again that I forgot there is um, just a little bit of red down in his, um, I'm taking that this is his wing, um, so there's a little bit of red going on right at the base here. So again, that's why when I mentioned Study your reference as you're painting it. Really look at it. You'll see things no one else will see because you're painting um, the bird or whatever your subject matter is. That's where some things are going to pop out at you going, wow, I never noticed that before. So you know when you get into a area that you're like quiet in because <laughs> you're having to concentrate. Okay. And again, um, for the lower portion, I'm working again with um, my blue and black. looking at my shape. And in a lot of ways it's very abstract. But there's a lot, a lot going on here. Just keep building and building and working with it. Working flat only what you guys have already heard until I can get a better 
set up. Because in a lot of ways, after a bit, this really kills my neck. And I know I can do it the other way and then do the editing of flipping it around and all that good stuff. But sometimes I think it, um, it takes away a little bit from uh, the resolution and everything. So I'm trying to make sure I do everything with clean resolution. what I'm seeing here is of course the shadow underneath is the the feathers that are laying on top of the base and then the lighter part on top is your your top your top feathers and I repeat myself a lot on words, so I apologize. It's like I've got a stutter. So again, I'm just building it up. Oh, I forgot to, my light, sorry. This one might be just a little bit dark. Let's get some light on this. Of course, now I can't see since I put the light on it. I'm going to try and put a little wood underneath the... Alright, so on this part, we're going to not use the light and um, it's, it was too bright in the sense that I, I got to move my lighting around. And this is further away from me, so... from the wet paint was not allowing me to see everything. I am looking for someone to help set me up with better videoing and um, just what's the best cameras for me to use. I know there's a lot of reference information out there. I've read a lot of it and watched a lot of videos. And right now a lot of that is out of my price range. Um, since um, really kind of on my own doing this, well, I, God's helping me. He's, he's also a big part of my life and um, I'm doing a lot of this um, through him that I'm able to. But anyways, um, to get the right equipment and set up, there's some things that, I mean, we can't know everything. And I accept that there's enough where I know what I need to do to do my graphic design for work as a computer graphic uh, designer. But there are some areas that I'm clueless on only because I haven't done the research, I haven't talked to the right people or something. But there's also a time where I just want someone to come in and, and, and do it for me. <laughs> I already do enough that it'd be great. Just come in, set me up, tell me what to do, what buttons to push. I don't want to think anymore because by the time I do get uh, to this part in my day, I'm stressed out or I'm starting to get exhausted. And I just, it's just nice to have someone think for you. I love it when someone does make me dinner and I don't have to think about what, what they're fixing or what I want. They just walk in and hand a plate and go, here, you hungry? So I'm putting a little bit more white in here than usual. They're showing a lot of blue. Um, what I'll do is go back over with the wash. Right now, I'm just trying to get my placement of my feathers. So I'm gonna be using the white 
to for the brightness of it and then like I said come back over with a bluish black wash which you know it's going to be kind of dark but not too dark because the white will pull out some of the lighter parts to it So this part here is a good example of shapes because this puppy has shapes everywhere. And again, this is where a lot of patient has to come into play. This is where, granted, okay, again, I'm not dissing anybody. There's something that can just fly through these. Now, I have to admit that sometimes there might be a painting or something that I've done several times before that I can move a little bit quicker on it because I've done it however many times. So sometimes I might be able to go a little bit faster. I'm looking at the way the feathers are laying, making sure I'm following the shadows. To make it look like they're part of his body and not belong, you know, to something else. section is pretty dark but there's still um, quite a few lights not necessarily really light light but there's highlights where the feathers are reflecting off I'm gonna say it's the sky where, our, where I'm seeing so much of this blue and again you just just keep working it And sometimes, too, there might be sections in a painting where you start on it and you're not feeling it, then move to another portion of the painting until you can sort out what you're doing over here. You're not always going to sit down and say, oh, okay, let's do this. I see it in my head. Sometimes you can see it in your head, but it doesn't always come on your canvas that way. It's like you're struggling with what you see in your head to put it to your paintbrush or to your pencil. When that happens, just kind of take a step back, go to a different section, work on that um, part, and then come back to it. If you still can't feel it, then continue on what does feel right, what is coming together, and approach this portion that you were struggling with another day so like what last time on part three I got to this section and I can already tell I'm not feeling it it's just not coming together um, and instead of coming in and getting aggravated with it I left it for my next video So you're not always going to feel it right away, and then you might. I mean, everybody's different. But what I'm trying to say is, so 
so this part wasn't working. Do I just put my paint down and say, oh, that's it, I'm, I'm done? No, work on another section. This isn't just one part of the painting. There's so much more uh, of the painting that you can go and work on um, until you're able to come back and do this part. What happens is we do allow ourselves to get frustrated, but we and we looking at the issue, the problem, where we're at, and not looking at the bigger picture, get outside the box, take a step back and going, okay, this part isn't working. This is not coming together. Where else can I go to finish up so I can go back to this section and get it where I need it to be? I think that's why some of the paintings I didn't have the right mindset of where I am today on what I need to do to make these work for me, to finish them up. So like I was saying earlier, so my friend is allowing me to slowly rent out a space in his building. So I leave my home and I come here to do my work. What a change. I always wondered if I left my place, be it going into my garage or um, a place outside, even a tree house. <laughs> Build an artist tree house. Oh, how cool would that be? An artist tree house. Anyways, I always felt that if I got out of the house, especially as a woman, I'm not going to be sitting there going, dishes need to be done. Oh, look at that, the laundry. Oh, look, at there's a TV over there. Oh, look, I need to do this. I mean, we always find something that will distract us so we don't finish or sit and work. Guys sometimes, I'm not saying they all do, but guys sometimes have it easier because they don't think about the dishes or the laundry or what needs to be done around the house or dinner or grocery shopping. So by me leaving and coming here, has made a has made a huge huge difference my place where I'm at is is too small there's really not a lot of whoops sorry about that not a lot of room for me to work um, so I felt like I was on top of everything I always said that I have more art supplies than I do clothes which is true I'm finding that out when I put this classroom together and my office together, um, how much stuff I have and how much paint and other elements to create art with it, I can't wait to try and work on these Wednesdays. I need a drink, sorry. But so, so this has been a, a really exciting year for me despite the, the COVID. Now, I have given myself a year, um, this time next year, of seeing where I want to be and reaching, did I reach where I want to be? Because um, then I'm gonna make some more changes if I haven't accomplished a few things. Um, in the art field and my personal part uh, in creativity and doing art and everything. So I have myself in front of me a whiteboard, which I'm writing down things I would like to achieve or accomplish um, this year. And um, so we'll see, we'll, we'll see. So I'm going back in on where I put the white and just washing in some yellow on top of it to um, brighten that up. Some of it I have to go back in a little bit thicker.
If you start inward with your paint and go outward, you can flick a little bit easier. You'll get more of that thinner line than if you do it in the opposite direction. I have a few, um, when I'm teaching, I've noticed that some of them, and sometimes I catch myself doing it, I'll go in the opposite direction. I'm like, why is that line so thick? And it's because I'm flicking in the wrong, I'm flicking the wrong way. So when I'm painting this way, I'm able to flick it outward to give it that softness or the thin lines at the end. So we are getting pretty close to the end of wrapping this up. Right now, like I said, I think I'm going to leave the background completely black. Again, I might come back later and put a background in, but I'm kind of liking the complete, just the bird and no distraction. All you see is the bird. And I was telling you guys to go, not to go this way. And what was I doing? I was flicking in the other way. So once you get to the point where you finally start seeing the end result that you want to call the end result, this is where you're going to come in and just kind of nitpick areas to make sure you're getting across what you're hoping to achieve. Um, if you're not sure if you're done or things are looking correct, take your painting and stand in front of the mirror and look at the painting um, through a mirror because the mirror will catch things that you might be missing. Turn your painting upside down, view it that way. Take it out of your normal way of looking at things. That's when you're gonna find something's not connecting correctly or something seems to be off. What you want to do when you go in to correct it, um, especially even when you're drawing, leave the mistake there. Work around the mistake because if you erase it, you will go back and do the exact same thing again. And then the mis you just repeated the mistake. It's just our human nature. We just, you know, we just, we repeat, we just, we don't see the mistake because we erased it and put the mistake back again. So leave the mistake there. Fix it and then come back and erase. It's a lot easier when you do it that way. Now I'm putting a little bit of white into my yellow to knock out that background a little bit um, so I don't have a hard edge. I'm trying to make sure I, I keep it soft so the blending the white in with my yellow is breaking it up a little bit for me. I felt that I had to, it was too, too hard, too sharp. All right, oh, I gotta put my wash down there. See, I'm trying to get ahead of myself already. My goal was to finish this up tonight and guess what, it's gonna happen. So what I want to do, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue. It has a little bit of black in it. Make sure it's a little bit watery. I'm gonna kind of lightly go over these. I don't want it heavy in color, so it's just like a wash. 
Now see how some of the areas are popping a little bit with that white that I placed down. So you're kind of getting, um, you're getting the shadows, but yet you're getting also still some of the highlights. And I'm washing that also back over into the black so it doesn't look like I um, cookie cut it out. Nothing's jumping out at me. I'm just adding a little bit more blue and black in here to give it an extra depth. It seemed a little flat there. So make sure I'm getting the blue down and then adding some black on top of it to mix it. So anything I do now is just kind of personal preference of wanting to make sure everything is popping a little bit. I'm gonna go back in here and I think I wanna just put some blue black. And on the eye a little bit more. Give it a little bit more richness to it. Again, I keep checking my reference to make sure nothing is jumping out that I might be missing. And the funny part is on this too, you can keep going back over and over and over on this because you see something that you missed or you want to add. Now I'm obviously, I don't think a painting is ever done until you finally go, that's it, <laughs> I'm done. I have found, I take that back, I don't know about others, but it's just me. I have found when I get to a point on a painting where I'm, I can't do anything else, I keep picking up the paintbrush and want to touch something but there's nothing to touch that's when I find I'm done now maybe later on I might find something but at that moment that I'm working on it and again I'm just in some areas and I think I went too far with my black so I'm going back in and touching it up I'm putting a little bit of yellow and then I'm putting some white in to help knock out the background but blend it also this done. I see some areas there that um, some of it chipped a little bit, which I can go back in and touch up a little bit of black here and there. And once this is dried really good, I'll give it a couple days, then I will spray it to seal it in. But Y'all, I think this is it. The and there we go. My toucan is now complete. There were some things in here that you found that you learned that you liked or just enjoy hanging out with me. I really enjoyed myself and look forward to doing the next painting with you. And um, yeah, again, thank you so much for joining me in creating this awesome toucan. I really hope you found some inspiration in painting your own toucan and 
work with it um, on an hourly basis, uh, two hours, once a week, whatever works for you. Um, I look forward to our next painting and y'all take care. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Until then, bye y'all.